steps into the show when people with these dudes bring if you didn't know it's an orange and blue thing hope to win the championship in a few rings it's an orange and blue thing walk off if the game's tied like shoestrings it's a Mets podcast orange and blue thing beat the other team with defense in a few swings LFGM it's an orange and blue thing What's up, Mets fans? It is March. That means baseball, real baseball, will be played this month. We are only 24 days from opening day at City Field. I am Darren Mean, and that's Pete McCarthy. What's up, Pete? Three and a half weeks. Let's get it. Yeah, man. That that Thursday is going to be. I, I'm hoping for nice weather. I mean, this this they could winter. Play today. They could play. today would be nice. Degrees, yesterday was a little sunny. chilly. Yesterday was actually winter again. This winter was cold. It was this a weekend chilly. was cold, but uh, but yeah, I mean today. Ready to go. It's been so mild. I'm sure we got like a, another three blizzards between now and mid-April somehow. Don't say it. <laughs> Don't I you hope, dare. I hope so. <laughs> oh, you hope so? Listen, we got Amelia a, uh, what do they call it? Uh, it's not a radio flyer. What do they call the, the the sled? Like the metal framed sled with the wood on the top? Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah not, I don't know. It's not a radio flyer. Whatever it is. Yeah. She got that for Christmas. It's been sitting in the corner ever since. <laughs> like Rosebud. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it's called. Uh, what's up, Lizzie? How you doing? Hey, I'm great. Good, 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 good. Keep it going. All right, guys. So, uh, uh, yeah, spring training is in full swing, actually, uh, this past weekend. Yesterday was uh, Mr. Conforto's birthday. Had a nice Mm -hmm. little home run out there to the berm. It will always be the berm. It will never be the hill, Mets. Stop trying to change the uh, name of the section out there. A little split squad. You had the Grom going and Waka going elsewhere. So, yep, yep. A lot of baseball. A lot of baseball. I mean, I couldn't watch yesterday, but I was listening on the radio, and obviously Howie and co always do a great job but real baseball can't get here soon enough but you know what i feel like there's a lot of excitement i think that the the team seems to be at least on paper looking to be a strong contender and i don't know if maybe because i'm getting older or wiser or um i don't know what the word is but i am excited but i'm not as like hey all in. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know what's different about right now. Well, I, I, some I of that will change once the season is actually here. It is spring training, and I think what is kind of nice is the Mets are a little under the radar over the last week or two. It's not like there have been major headlines breaking every day from Mets camp. In fact, it's really been the Yankees over the last couple of weeks with the injuries to Luis Severino, before that James Paxton and John Carlos Stanton. That's the stuff that you want to avoid in spring training. You don't want a whole lot of buzz or noise around what's going on your team. You want it to be quiet in spring training and all right, the games are going on, everybody's doing well, Jacob DeGrom gets in his three innings and looks fine and just kind of ho-hum march towards the season. That's what you're looking for. You don't need a headline every single day and the Mets had a lot of them coming in between you and Cespedes and Jed Lowry and it's not as if we know a whole lot more now than we did then on those topics but nothing new has really developed that would make you concerned I mean all you want to do stay healthy survive spring training get through it and then boom start up uh, against the Nationals on opening day and be ready to roll well how about Mr. DeGrom yesterday because that first inning the top of the first only took three minutes for him Seven out there. Seven pitches. Seven pitches, three minutes. He went three innings, uh, struck out two, one hit, only fi- you know faced the minimum there, nine batters. Uh, he's obviously looking strong, looking ready to go. Uh, you can bring up the comparison just because it's something to talk about, but him and, and Cole, who's the best pitcher in New York, is not going to go away. No, that'll and- be fun for – the year the foreseeable future <laughs> yeah. not just this season but you know for multiple years both these guys are signed up long term one on a much more manageable deal than the other with what Gary Cole is able to get resetting the entire market but yeah they're both great pitchers look I- I'd prefer to have Jacob DeGrom I think he got back-to-back Cy Youngs and DeGrom's also a guy that's won some big games in the postseason uh you know what he was able to do that game five against the Dodgers in the division series always sticks with me and the fact that DeGrom so often, he could not have his best stuff and find a way through. I mean, that's part of what sticks with you from that outing against the Dodgers all those years ago. But we've seen it time and again. 
he doesn't always – it's not always easy for him, right. yet you always seem to look up and it's six innings, two runs or less on the board at the very least, and then those other days where he's got the great stuff and he could rack up 13-plus uh, strikeouts. I mean, then it's a whole other ball game. But that that's what I love about DeGrom. He's so consistently terrific. Uh, that's where I would give him the edge over what Garrett Cole did. And I thought Cole, he should have been the AL Cy Young Award winner to me last year. I mean, he was as feared a pitcher as there was – um, maybe in the game at the end of last year, but you got to do it for a little longer period of time like DeGrom has. DeGrom's always able to find a way, like you said, even when he doesn't have his best stuff. But uh, I forgot to start this off in the jump. The share contest giveaway is mm. sponsored by us, the Seven Line. So if you share the show right now, if you're watching on Facebook, hit that little share button. If you are watching on Twitter or Periscope, retweet. And if you're watching afterwards on Instagram, Instagram TV, just comment that you want to win and we'll scroll through. But today's prize... Mr. McCarthy, is a $20 gift card to the Seven Lines website. So if you guys had your eye on something, you could use it for anything you see on our site, uh, game tickets for the away games, apparel, accessories, whatever. So Get those tote bags now. Oh, my God. Yeah, the totes. You know, shout out to Lizzie, who popped into my office the other day, and she said, hey, uh, the New York City ban on plastic. The New York State. New York State ban on plastic kicks off on Sunday. You should probably start pushing those canvas bags because we, we bought them because when we joined the Alive After Five at, in Patchogue, it's plastics banned uh, for when you sell products on the street. You can't give out plastic. So we ordered the canvas totes, initially thinking we were just going to have them on the truck, not put them on the site. We sell a ridiculous amount of canvas tote bags, but this past weekend was like... Which... I th- I was control. like, you're out of your mind if you think that people are going to buy those bags. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> well, you need them. I mean, Very for me, wrong. It kind of snuck up on me. I didn't quite realize that it was, oh, like it's like three days. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to have plastic bags anymore. And I, you know, like you a lot of people, them, I've got all the plastic bags under the sink so that I, I save. Yeah. And then that's how I bring my food to work and things like that. Yeah. So this is going to be a game changer for yep. me with how I operate. But out here you know, in Suffolk County, when it started a while ago, you could, if you forget, you could pay for five cents. Five cents. Yeah. It, you can pay f- pay for a bag, but it's I think it's only paper. It's a paper bag. Oh, okay. you Plastic is no longer an option. I guess you could bring a paper bag to work, but I... I like, <laughs> like the handle. A little, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. a little brown I, I, bag. Like well, ours are five. They're huge, though. People are like, oh, I'm not going to pay that for a canvas tote bag. I understand it's five dollars, but um, you know they're not cheap. It's, it's I a, use our canvas tote all the time. I used our canvas tote all the, for like, every game like every last day. Year. I brought my lunch in my my seven line canvas bag. Every, well, I got to carry the K day. cards for the home games, so I use the canvas yeah. tote. So mm-hmm. it's five dollars for one, nine dollars if you want one of each color. Go to sevenline.com if you live in New York or you just want to help the planet there. But um, I do have something else coming out pretty soon that I can't show off yet. It's not a canvas tote bag, but another bag that you will be able to uh, uh, stuff with all your favorite Mets things soon. So stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, so our friends at Dugout Mugs are giving away $400. What? Yeah, Lizzie didn't hear about this yet. Today's uh, Dugout Mugs. Promo is for four hundred dollars worth of dugout mugs stuff. I wish you could see Lizzie's face right now because <laughs> this is what it looks like. She no, is. I, in, I changed it. <laughs> <laughs> she is in shock. So uh, I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to that detail those details in a little bit. But I definitely want to give a special shout out to them because Whoa. that's incredible. Dugoutmugs.com. I know Pete said he saw one of uh, someone he follows this past week and had a wedding. Yeah, I was filling in for a radio host uh, oh, yesterday. The 29th, right? Yeah, it was yesterday, and uh, he got married Saturday, and I saw on his Twitter that he got all his groomsmen dugout mugs and the little shot glasses, the knobs, and all that kind yep. of thing. I'm drinking water today. Well, I'm going to be drinking Coors Light in a second, but I'm drinking my water today out of the wind-up bat wine bat mug. I thought you were double fisting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to drink beer. two because you can't drink today, so I'm going to drink two. Step it up. Uh, on a Monday <laughs> at noon. But uh, head, over t- head over to uh, dugoutmugs.com. You could shop for Met stuff or pretty much anything if you're, if you're uh, buying for a friend. And uh, anything can be customized, like Pete just said. They make bat mugs. They make wine mugs. They make bottle openers. They make shot glasses. And uh, they make a whole bunch of great stuff. So dugoutmugs.com and definitely stay tuned to find out how you could be one of the lucky fans to dip into that four hundred dollar worth of free stuff, but I am going to crack open this brewski. I I really need one today. 
<laughs> Cheers to Lizzie. Cheers. Pete actually has another job after this. Cheer. I don't know if it's bad luck to Cheers Water, but doing it anyway. Cheers, Lizzie. Cheers. Shout out to our friends at Coors Light. The best beer <sighs> for noon on a Monday. Uh, Pete actually has a bunch of different jobs, so he shouldn't really be drinking here and then going someplace afterwards. No, I can't do that. So. I mean, nobody would know. But just, I'm the b- just hydrate up. Nobody would know unless they're watching the show, but, you know. It's just straight whiskey in here anyway now, so. I'm Lizzie's boss, and we encourage drinking on the job um, as long as everything is, is uh, kosher with the orders. But I was thinking about maybe doing like a cookie and beer club coming soon. I, I, this seems to be a thing. Do you think maybe how cookie would that and taste? beer though? Cookies I, and beer? I mean, is yeah. That, you, what doesn't go good with beer? You can have a porter. A porter oh, and dip go. it. Yeah. Dip it in. Porters are are not not they're not as thick as as that. Well, it's like a dessert. Yeah, and, and you don't have sweet. like eight of them. Yeah. I or guess they I have like an oatmeal stout. That would probably mm. be really good too. We should hit up Coors Light see if they got any any porters for us. All right, guys, so uh, the, the Cookie Club, I'm sure you've heard about it, but the Cookie Club came out the other day. Shout out to uh, Decomo for getting the story. Um, I was talking to someone before we went live about this, and I don't know if it, like, does it ruin the Cookie Club at all now that it's so public? Do they want it to be more of, like, the secret society of cookie eating? <laughs> or I don't is think it, that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it less cool now that everyone knows about it? Is it less cool? Well, I don't know. It's a cookie club, so I don't think they're getting that many cool points uh, in the first place with this. But, you know, this is what you hear from, you know, Keith and Ron on the broadcast that they used to do, you know, back the 86 bets in the 80s where they'd all crack beers and hang out in the clubhouse after the game and, you know, just shoot it a little bit, right? And talk about the game or whatever's happening, but you have that conversation and, you know, that you're able to help each other out when yeah. you're spending like time together. They talk yeah. about that with and there's camaraderie Gardner. and yeah. all that. So, you know, I mean, that is a good thing for a baseball team to do. They, they do it when they're on the road. They hang out and have cookies and milk. I mean, it's a little different than 30 years ago, I guess. But, you know, when they're just cracking beers. But, you know, look, that's what it's about. And, and you read DeComo's article and how there are little tips that they're able to share with one another after the game. I, that's a... That's a good thing. That's the kind of stuff that you want rather than everybody just splitting up, going their own way and, you know, going out to the bar or just sleeping at the hotel or whatever it might be. I mean, it's important to spend that kind of that extra time together. I think anybody that works, you know, your favorite jobs are the ones where maybe you go to happy hour after work and, you know, you talk about work for a little while and then you're over it and you start, you know, busting on somebody or, you know, just developing relationships and and hanging out. And I think, um, yeah, I think anybody can identify with that. And that's a positive for your work environment and what you're trying to accomplish. Well, it's it's funny, like the difference between 2% milk and crushing beers but uh no anything to get the guys together i have a buddy of mine who talks so much shit about work always talking about work oh this person that person and then he still goes to happy hour with these people i'm like you talk so much crap about your job why are you trying to go out with them on a friday don't you want to be like away from that he's like well that's where we kind of chop it up about next week's work and yada yada so um what i found interesting i couldn't uh find it in the article i just tried to skim through but dom smith when he got hurt last year one of his main reasons for wanting to stay with the team on the road was the cookie club. He, he liked being around the guys uh, and they help each other out. And like you said, <laughs> they, they're, they're trading tips back and forth. Maybe they're going to face a tough lefty the next day, yada, yada. But um, the, the cookie club, if you don't know and you haven't read it yet, it was Alonzo, Alonzo Davis, McNeil, Nimmo, Conforto, and Smith. I'm sure there's some other guys that bounced in there once in a while. But it was funny, McNeil the other day wrote... Um, you know, he quote, quote tweeted to Como and he wrote snickerdoodles and 2% milk. That was like his his uh, reply to this whole thing. So that's uh, his order. That's his go to. Yep. Yep. There is people have been asking, like, where's the T-shirts? I already designed one. Lizzie saw it. The people who don't have a license with Major League Baseball, uh, you know, can put their stuff up right away without the proper approval. So I don't know how long it's going to take, but we have a pretty fire uh, cookie club T-shirt. Uh, in the wings, so we'll see if uh, it gets approved. Lizzie's smiling behind the scenes there. It's cute. I'll show it to you after <laughs> after we turn this off. I said actually that that comment, it's cute, was the reply to one of I have a few people that I bounce ideas off of, and they wrote it's cute, and I'm like, well, yeah, what Cookie Club is tough, you know, like <laughs> yeah. it's supposed to be cute. It's a cute looking shirt. Well, it's a cute story, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. all this stuff. Is, oh, it's cute. They hang out and have cookies and milk, and they're you know twenty something, thirty year old guys, <laughs> yeah. and this is what they they I do. Think it's whatever sexy. it takes. It's sexy. I don't. Yeah. I wouldn't say that. It's a Cookie Club T-shirt. It's not supposed. To, uh, whatever. Uh, we'll no, see. No, the club is sexy, not the shirt. The shirt is cute. 
Oh, okay. Cut the sleeves but, off the shirt. Maybe yeah, they got muscle, make it cute and sexy. Muscle T. Show off the biceps. <laughs> but I think we should, maybe we should try that in the summer. Um, try different beers that pair well with cookies and, and dunk them and see what, how they taste I like. I like it. <laughs> Did you happen to catch the day? I know SNY posted this afterwards. Uh, Keith Hernandez is uh, dairy free. Did you see that? I know that's a trendy dietary choice these days he's dairy free hmm. unless he wants to eat a quart of ice cream he said <laughs> what it's good you gotta have exceptions no firm <laughs> rules in life yes yeah, so like he's like you know uh, no you know what it was gary was busting keith's chops about drinking his starbucks coffee i think that dunkin Donuts sponsors the mets so typically they're not usually showing labels of uh you know, something like that. So he's drinking his Starbucks coffee. Gary's saying, oh, you're basically, you're bougie. You're too good for the coffee here. And Gar- and Keith says, well, I like almond milk. I like this. I like that. And he said, unless I want to stop on the way home back to, you know, wherever he lives for like a quart you gotta of live it up once cream. in a while. Yeah, I mean, so he makes exceptions. That's all part of it. Yeah, but Gary's like, oh, well, you're going to make an exception. You don't want to have like a drop of regular milk in your coffee, but you'll eat a jar of ice cream. Yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I honestly, I have like almond milk in my cereal now. I've gotten used to that, so that's like a transition thing I've, I've kind of done over the last couple of years. But I'll, I'll still have ice cream. Like I'll but still have cheese on my sandwich. I'm not going cold free, turkey here. Some dairy free ice creams are really good. Like really good. I've been dairy free for like a year, and it's not not because of um, you know the animal product stuff. It's more because I felt like I was being stabbed. Every like I'd be. Mm. I basically cut out everything to figure out what it was, and I just kind of stayed off it from now from then on. But um, if anyone who cares, I'm not trying to you like. You could just say for health reasons. Push any <laughs> uh, conspiracies here, but the documentary that uh, oh, no. Leonardo DiCaprio was behind a few years ago, mm-hmm. it's called Cowspiracy. If anyone wants to watch that, it's it's pretty. It it could be life changing for some people. Check that out, Cowspiracy. But Cowspiracy. did you see the what award show was it recently where it was all. They made all the the A list stars at like the Oscars. It was the dinner was plant based. Did you hear about that? Oh yeah, I don't remember. Which Oscars, one. Grammys. No, one of those. it's like the Emmys, maybe where they sit down and eat. I don't know, but it was no, it wasn't Emmys. That's like television stuff, I think. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Um, well, changing topics cool. here, but still uh, based around the Cookie Club guys. Did you happen to catch Joe and Evan at all live from uh, Clover? I saw it for a second when they, I saw a picture online, really, of Brody was on the show with them, but I, I didn't get to listen to it. I missed Brody entirely, but I pretty much caught the entire Pete Alonso uh, interview or segment, whatever you want to call it. And um, the guys were talking to Pete about his year and, you know, the 53 home runs and, and Rookie of the Year and, you know, all that stuff with the All-Star game. But they said to him, what was your favorite moment of the year? And he said, watching Dom Smith come back and hit the walk-off of the season. So it's I, – I I wouldn't expect anything different from him. I wouldn't think that they would say, what's your favorite part of the year? And he would pick out a personal achievement. Mm-hmm. But the camaraderie between these guys and the cookie club, the reason why there's a cookie club is because of the guys and the bonding and all that. And I love hearing and seeing that. Well, especially with Alonzo and Smith because they They're are for in too. competition. Yeah. And and I give Dom Smith a ton of credit for the way that he has handled things because that was kind of his position at first base. And, you know, he knew there was this guy, Pete Alonzo, rising up through the minor leagues and no jealousy. I mean, you never got any hint of that. He's the first one to greet Alonzo when he does something well, and and that's not easy to do when your playing time is on the line. You're trying to establish yourself as a major leaguer. Suddenly, you're getting thrust out into left field, and you have to learn a new position because of what Alonzo is able to do uh, on the field and certainly at the plate. So you, know, you give Dom a lot of credit. But I remember watching that last game of the season last year. He was like, "I'll oh, get Dom in at bat. Like you got to find a way to get him in there." And they never did for those first nine innings. And finally, I huh. think it was the eleventh gets the opportunity and hits the walk off home run. It was it was great because. You know, it's easy for guys to, they get hurt. All right, let's just shut it down. You know, the games aren't meaningful for the rest of the year. But Dom Smith fought to get back on the field, have one more plate appearance, and he, he made it count at the end. And that's that's great. But going into the off season, you have, you know, something to really feel good about and, you know, obviously end the year on a, a bit of an exclamation point for the team overall. That was so much fun. Obviously, well, not obvious if you're new to the seven line, but we go to every last game of the year, loyal to the last out. And um, we were out there with the crew and it was such a way to end the year. And then we went to the pine and had a, had a fun night after that. But it was, it was 
an exclamation point on a season that was disappointing, but you know they still were technically in it until the last week if everything kind of fell their way. But I think it was a it proved to be a likable team, oh, for especially sure. over the back half of the season with the winning streak that they had in August that kind of reinvested everybody in the team, and then you know seeing some of the young guys take over and Pete Alonso of this tremendous rookie year, and you know Alonso setting it up where they wear the cleats and and are able to give tribute oh, yeah, to yeah, yeah. you know some of the the, the groups in in nine eleven and and, and thinking back on that anniversary and remembering it because they're not allowed to wear the hats and kind of found a way around it. So there, there's just a lot of those things, I thought, those last couple of months that really you know, made the team, uh, you know, again, likable and, and where you're pulling for more than just the laundry, you know, just the jersey when you, you look at this squad. It's what makes, I think, going into this year fun. Even if they're not the most talented team in the division, it is a team that has upside and then generally, I, I think, a, a likable group that, you know, had some good dynamics at the end of the year and uh you know with the managerial change i think that helps a little bit as well i think Pete could just do no wrong you know i feel like where he is already less than a year from his first major league baseball game i feel like whatever he wants to do i feel like he could just do you know like the lfgm stuff and granted it's not everyone's thing i i mean i'm on board with it but the mets they wrote lfgm once but they wrote let's freaking go mets and then after that it's kind of just like pete's thing and it, if you watch the show, I tried to make a shirt. It wasn't approved by Major League Baseball, but they're kind of letting some things. If it's Pete, it's kind of like, OK. And if it was someone else kind of, you know, trying to maybe do the cleats or whatever, maybe it wouldn't have gotten as much attention or, or um, uh, approvals, let's say. I feel like Pete's kind of like kind of almost running the show. He's like the captain without being the captain already. Well, I think, yes, and, and he has a lot of that, but I, I think – stands out about Pete versus a lot of other players that come up and come through is he has tried to understand what makes the Mets unique like their history I remember you know he called back you gotta believe and I don't know, maybe it was like a little forced at the time and he read something on the wall in the clubhouse <laughs> yeah, that yeah. they have and kind of brought it back but you know a lot of guys won't even make that effort because all 30 teams have their own little cultures and histories and idiosyncrasies and it seems maybe it's just because I grew up with the Mets but it seems like the Mets have even more than than most teams or maybe anybody with a lot of these things and I think Alonzo wants to know those things and what makes the Mets unique and then kind of you know play into that a little bit you know like the Mets connection in the days after September 11th and you know having an idea that oh fans want to see them wear these hats and they wear the hats for the first responders during batting practice but then they can't wear them during the game and finding that workaround I mean that's just the kind of thing to me where it's like a guy took the time to learn a little bit about the the history of the team it's placed in the community right and okay well what can we do and then have the you know foresight the work ethic whatever it takes to actually follow through on it and do something that people can say, ah, oh, that's a nice gesture. Yeah, let's not forget his winnings from the Home Run Derby. He donated yeah. a portion of that as well. Yeah, so he did Warriors he's and the then man. Uh, Pete's the, the Siller man. Foundation, right? Absolutely. Uh, so yesterday I was having a little fun on social media in the morning. I think maybe a couple days ago. Maybe it was Saturday night first, but uh, this weekend's been a blur. Hmm. Amelia has been waking us up at 5 in the morning every day. But um, Lizzie, I don't know if you saw this. I know you had a busy weekend as well. I decided to ask the public on our social channels for the seven line if mrs met had a first name what would her name be and it this got like thousands of replies across social media it. what would you what would you think do you i didn't I i'm don't, gonna read a couple of like notable ones here which make a lot of sense but i don't know if i necessarily have a name for her but i did see somebody wrote mr met should be homer and she should be something that was like you know baseball related and i thought it was really cute but now i don't remember not marge no, no. <laughs> I saw some people try to like link in Syndergaard somehow and say that uh, I don't watch Game of Thrones or whatever he's on Thor, or whatever. Uh, the the wife of Thor should be her name, but okay. Well, Thor's not Game of Thrones. Whatever it is, I don't watch that stuff. I don't know. What, <laughs> I, I watch no Game idea. of Thrones. I mean, Cersei might be a little aggressive for Mrs. So, Matt. Yeah, I think she's no. a nicer person than Cersei. But, Definitely. Uh, I don't know. Does Thor? Uh, I don't know anything about Thor. I, I know nothing seen about Me comics neither. or <laughs> yeah, fantasy. The superhero <laughs> stuff. I'm a little out on, but I am up on Game of Thrones. I don't think there's a Game of Thrones character that would fit the Mister Met, Mrs. Met universe. I don't know. I've never seen even a second of the show, but uh, I I want to shout out a couple notable uh, responses here. So Jacqueline Petras, I hope I'm saying that night. Jacqueline or Jacqueline, Jacqueline, on Facebook wrote Nancy. 
and Mr. Met should be Tom, like Tom and Nancy Seaver. That, that would make sense. Uh, Kevin Crawford, also on Facebook, wrote Karen because she needs to speak to the manager. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mets <laughs> underscore Militia on Instagram wrote Met Trisha. Okay. <laughs> like Patricia. Met Trisha. Yeah. Met Trisha Met. Yeah. That's pretty good. Um, and then a couple, a lot of people actually said these top three. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they said this for this reason or because they know the sentimental reasons, but Shannon would be great for Shannon Ford. Huge, uh, huge uh, Mets connection there. Um, Joan for Joan Payson. That's the first one that came to my mind. Joan mm-hmm. or Shay. So those would be some good ones. Uh, I asked Amelia, and she said, uh, "Rainbow, flower, or rose." And obviously, Alyssa Rose jumped right in. Rose, I'm all about it. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if Mrs. Matt really needs a name, but that's what you talk about in. February. Well, well, does uh, Mr. Matt have a name? Like, why Why did it uh, strike you that Mrs. Matt I don't know. might need a name? I have no idea why I was thinking about this, but I was, oh, maybe it was because we're doing our bobblehead this year. Maybe I was thinking about the bobble, and I don't I, I don't really know. I'm thinking about stuff 24-7. Lizzie knows. I'll text her, and I kind of, like, forget what time it is. It'll be, like, 1 in the morning on a Wednesday. I'm like, hey, uh, what do you think of this? And then I, I like look at the time, people. and I'm like... One you know in the what? morning after, on a Friday night, you know, and like, oh, okay, this is, you know, what when I finally have time to, like, sit down and do things, it's just the worst time for any other human being. Well, I should email because, well, I, we don't ever, I've never that, sent an email to her in my life, I don't I think. Don't, oh, yeah, no. I would but prefer a text. I email you sometimes because you have weird hours. I'd rather email you than text you, but. More, more responsive on email. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I'll start doing emails more than, well, yeah, I don't then text, text that much. message? Yeah. Really? Well, text message, I tend to. I'm like in my email all the time. I'm uh, not a text. Sometimes I'll see it, get busy with something else, and I don't. Do you keep back. your phone on silent? Yes. Me too. So I feel like when I get an email, I don't even know. Silent I'm... with the vibration, or just completely? It's completely silent. Wow. Because I do radio stuff, so I don't want to go oh, yeah, that's off true. at, yeah, at yeah, random yeah. times, and then like the whole thing buzzes and it hits the microphone. So yeah. I yeah. always have it completely off. So which is not good. Um, <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that, but. The uh, yeah, I'll hit her up often in like the middle of the night and whatever. So so, Mister Matt, are we naming him too? If we were going to, I like the idea with uh, uh, Tom and Nancy Seaver. If yeah. we had to do a duo there, okay, I think that'd be pretty cool. Tom Met, Tom Met. Let's get a, you know, Bill Shea. Uh huh. Name him Bill. Yep. Kind yep. of the father of the Mets there. Yep. Well, I have a book. Uh, they'll call him Mister Met. It's what it's called. You should get it. Um, <laughs> and, you know, free ad right there. But uh, you know, I used to read it to my my daughter all the time. She actually requested it. And you'd think it'd be something like I'm trying to push it on her, but she'd want to read it. And it's got the whole family in there, so it's got the story. You know, obviously make pretend here. I don't know who wrote the story, but I had to get approved somewhere of how Mr. Met came to be. He was sitting out in the outfield once the uh, uh, the the Dodgers left ca- for California, and Casey Stengel walks out to him and says, "Hey, kid, you want to be our mascot?" And that's how Mr. Met supposedly is born, according to this book. <laughs> uh, so maybe you guys should pick that up. Uh, the uh, the that's share contest. Don't forget. Yeah, that's exactly how it happened. No, it the share contest today. Share the show if you're watching on Facebook. Retweet if you're watching on Twitter slash Periscope, or just comment if you're watching in, on Instagram that you want to win this gift card. We're giving away a $20 gift card for the Seven Lines website, three of them, one on each platform. We're also on YouTube. Our YouTube um, uh, viewers viewership is very low. It's almost embarrassing low, but we're kind of new on there right now. So uh, if you want to watch on YouTube, maybe you got an Apple TV or whatever, you can watch the show on YouTube as well. And obviously, streaming uh, uh, podcasts pretty much anywhere podcasts are listened and don't forget about the four hundred dollars we're giving away or they're giving away for dugout mugs towards the end of the show. But I want to bring up another story here, uh, which it's not usually commonplace uh, for you to get news on a player from the player's wife. <laughs> but there was a lot of chatter last week about Brandon Nimmo's uh, irregular heartbeat. I guess he was wearing a monitor for a while, monitoring what was going on. I guess he, the the walls of his heart. They want to make sure they didn't get thicker. And this is kind of like a normal thing, but you instantly hear Brandon was wearing a heart monitor. You jump to conclusions and think the worst. You know, he was out of a game for cardiac, further cardiac testing. And, you know, like Brad Wick of the Cubs, they uh, checked him, too. He needed to have 
I guess a, a quick surgery. Um, I'm forgetting the the name of it, but yeah, you know, he he's expected to come back and pitch within a couple of weeks. But it, it's good they do some of these tests and find some of these things because we can all think of some athletes that you know had some heart trouble out of nowhere. And you know when you're racking up that heart rate on the field, obviously these are things that are good to be aware of and to look out for. Uh, but yeah, I think everyone was a little, oh, what's going on with this and. Uh, yeah, Chelsea Nimmo, Brandon's wife, she's a nurse, so she's up on all these things as well, but just wanted to put everyone's concerns at ease, I suppose. Yeah, it was a pretty it was pretty much the same day because you know, she's got Twitter. She probably sees all the chatter going on about her husband. She's, she chimed in and said, I'm just going to say it, Brandon's fine, other than wishing he could play. The timing was inconvenient and caused the media storm. She followed that up with, P.S., I also apologize in advance if this breaks any rules that I don't know about. <laughs> so, uh you kind of cover her bases there, but I'm sure it's fine to say your husband's okay. Well, okay, if a bunch of people are tweeting at you because right, they right, know right. that she's on social media, hey, what's going on with Brandon? We hope he's okay. And, like, you know, say we're sending thoughts and prayers, whatever it might be, thinking it's serious, you probably want to allay the concerns a little bit. But this is this is kind of the, the new world, right? Everybody's got the platform, the ability to put things out, and, you know, it's – Chelsea Nimmo uh, breaking news on <laughs> what's happening with Brandon and that, you know, it was no like the headline deal, on no every concern. story. Yeah. yeah. Well, when he was scratched from the lineup and then Matt Adams. No, her. her. Oh, oh, oh. It yes, was like yes. on SMY, you know, yes. Mets blog. All he's like, Chelsea says he's OK. Yeah. I, have you had a, ever had a chance to meet her? Yes. Uh, so QBC? we did the Queens baseball convention. Yep. And I interviewed Brandon for about an hour at the uh, at the convention. And so I spent some time mm. with Brandon and Chelsea beforehand. And I was just kind of like needling her a little bit because, you know, an hour is a long time to interview a, a baseball player. And I didn't know how loquacious Brandon could be. Uh, but I was like, oh, you know, give me some dirt on him. Like, yeah, give me some stories. I could kind of, you know, and she was a good sport about all of it. And, uh, you know, it was great. So she was very nice, very sweet. And, um, you know, getting a chance to chat with them a little bit. And I know, you know, he got married. They got married about the same time that my wife and I did. So I was talking to Brandon once about you know, honeymoon and all that kind of stuff. He apparently ran into Travis Darno on his honeymoon in Hawaii. No way. <laughs> yeah. This is like a joint honeymoon. <laughs> they, you know, I guess Brandon and Travis went like snorkeling or something together uh, as part of the honeymoon, but they had no idea they would be there. They just ran into each other in the lobby or whatever it was, the hotel, like small world kind of stuff, even on the other side of the world. They couldn't be a nicer couple. You know, a lot of these, you deal with a lot of players and, you know, interviews and stuff like that with these guys and sometimes it's let me be here for the paycheck in and out sign some autographs take some pictures and be out i don't know if lizzie remembers but uh the nimos stuck around at catch they ordered dinner they sat down they chopped it they stayed for an extra like three hours i'm like breaking down the orange and blue thing set they're still sitting there talking to people like could not be nicer and definitely not you know, uppity on their high horse, bougie, whatever the words you want to use. They're so down to earth. Totally and just down normal to earth. People. No, he won everybody over with that interview. Yeah. Because, you know, Brandon Nimmo wasn't yet established. And I remember that week talking about on my radio show, hey, they should consider dealing Brandon Nimmo to the Pirates for Josh Harrison. Uh -huh. And it's a good thing I'm not a general manager. But, you know, for, I thought Harrison would be, you know, an excited guy at the top of the line, does a lot of different things. And Nimmo hadn't yet had the big year that he had in 2018. This was right before that, and it was kind of his breakout season. And so I, I remember talking about that on the show all week, and then, all right, now I'm going to interview Nimmo at this event, and I asked him about it, the trade rumors, and he just kind of shrugged it off like this Part is what it game, is. It yeah. wasn't really anything new for him because as a prospect, he was a first-round pick, and he's got a lot of high ceiling, and then it was kind of his prospect status took a dip where it's, oh, well, he's going to be a fourth outfielder at best, and maybe he won't even make it up to the major leagues. And he kind of had this little roller coaster ride on the way up. And I think, you know, he's proven he's more than a fourth outfielder. He's been terrific when he's healthy, when he's right. And that'll be something that he has to prove this season that he could stay on the field. But, um, but yeah, I mean, as, as nice a guy as you're going to find, I think, in any clubhouse, any athlete, I mean, he was, uh, he was incredible that day. And that's why I feel like the QBC is so important to have around each year. Maybe not on the grand large level that they were planning to have him okay he's this year but the qbc and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago too qbc and mets fan fest can absolutely coexist they're so different from each other like watching not that you want to watch brandon nimmo eat dinner but <laughs> being in a in a restaurant bar setting with nimmo and hanging out and talking whatever is completely laid back compared to what you might see at city field so Keith and Dan, hopefully they're going to bring that back. But on the same breath, do you know that I did get the wheels in motion a little bit on this cruise? 
Oh, really? So I had a phone call on, what was our show last week, Tuesday? Mm-hmm. I, sh- I had a phone call with Jim Brewer on Wednesday, and he just came back from a similar style cruise with a uh, band. Oh, shit, I don't know the name of the band. And uh, the Impractical Jokers just, just did a cruise. So there's a company in Atlanta that Jim's going to hook me up with that helps plan out the whole thing. Wow. So people think that I'm just oh like... Oh, my Lord. I'm mad. Like, this is <laughs> like, happening. oh, there's some stupid... You know, Darren's got some dumb idea again, but it's... It could really happen. Seven I'm, line cruise. I'm buying drama me now. <laughs> and <laughs> bunch of those masks for Pete because he's nervous about getting sick for, uh, you know, the. Well, the masks aren't going to help you. You get stuck on the boat. I don't, don't want to be locked up on the boat for a week. Well, that'd be a bad idea. No, it's two weeks. Yeah. I mean, no, I think we're thinking like a four day thing. So <laughs> no. that's not that's not dead. So yeah, no, I'm talking about if you have to be quarantined, well, yeah, you have yeah, to be yeah. there for two weeks. <laughs> All right. But back to Brandon Nimbo. Where do you see him in this lineup? Is he going to be leading off? He should be. I, I think this lineup is the best when Nimmo is on top. That's what he does. He gets on base by any means necessary. He can walk. He can get. He gets hit by a lot of pitches as well. Whenever it takes to get to first, so that's what he does. You know, the knock on Nimmo is that he doesn't hit for a high average. So you know, he's not a guy that I want hitting seventh and is coming up with men on in scoring position because he's not that effective in that position. He's not going to be driving in runs. Brandon Nimmo's job is to score runs. Get on base for McNeil. Get on base for Pete Alonso. So, you know, that's where I think Nimmo is the most value. Just get on base. That's your job. That's your one thing to do. And then I love Jeff McNeil hitting second. I think McNeil's going to hit for power. I got him for 30 homers this year. No I way. think that he's going to turn on some pitches, and he started to do it late last year. We saw Daniel Murphy make this transition, and this is what so many players are able to do if they have the necessary – uh, you know, bat to ball, you know, your eye eye hand coordination, and, mm-hmm. and that's something McNeil has in spades. I was reading the record had a big story on McNeil and how he was found, and he didn't really play high school baseball. He was a golfer. He wanted to get a scholarship for golf. He didn't perform well at the end, so it didn't look like that was going to happen. So he got back into baseball. And what made him stand out to college coaches and scouts and and, and people of that nature was the fact that he always put the bat on the ball, that he had 13 pitches thrown to him by guys that were throwing their 90s that had college scholarships, and he put all of them, at least made contact on all of them. And it was, well, I I haven't seen that, especially from a guy who hasn't played. So that's what McNeil has, just like Murphy had. And if you have the ability to put the bat on the ball consistently – and you have that kind of hand-eye coordination, all you got to do is turn on it a little bit. I don't think he'll be cheated with the average. Again, we saw Daniel Murphy make this exact transition. You saw it the second half last year. Look at how his power numbers went up. I I think McNeil in that second spot, he could be dangerous as more than just a guy who's a singles hitter hitting for average. And then you think about Alonzo behind him, and we'll see what Cespedes can do. But that is the Mets' best lineup. Nimmo at the top, McNeil two, and then you go to Alonzo. It's funny. You said 30 home runs. I said, no way. I looked it up. He had 23 last year, and I feel like it's – obviously, it's not that far off. But I feel like he was just always on base, and I'm not even – thinking that he put the ball over the wall yeah. 23 times. And look what year. he did the second half because he only had like two homers through May uh, or something along those lines. And then he was able to really bust out and it became much more a part of his game. And look, you don't have to swing for the fences to hit the ball out anymore. The way the ball is traveling last year, all you got to do is barrel it up and it will go. So Unless they change the ball. Well, we'll see what everyone happens. Hit 20, that. Everyone hit 20 home runs last year. It seemed like in the postseason the ball wasn't traveling in the same way. But, yeah, I, I really think McNeil's going to be much more of a power bat, and I don't think that he has to lose anything to do that. We talk about this with Conforto. See, I think Conforto sells out for home runs, and he becomes too pull conscious, and he loses average. He loses when he does that. Conforto should go left center field, bunch of doubles, and the home runs are going to carry out, and he can have 30 home runs and still hit 290. I uh-huh. still think that Michael Conforto has that if he stops trying to hit it 500 feet to right field. But that's he doesn't have swing. to do that. I know, but <laughs> I'm joking. But for, for Conforto, that's what I look at for him. McNeil, turn on some extra pitches, and I'm telling you, he will hit for a lot of power, and I don't think he'll lose anything. So a guy that hit, used to hit for a lot of power for the Mets was in camp this week. Mr. Mike Piazza made his annual trip to, uh, I'm about to say, uh, well, Clover Park. But uh, he was in camp this week, and um, you know he suits up, gets in uniform, sits in the dugout, takes questions from the reporters, and so on and so forth. But um, a couple big ones that came up were, are you buying the Mets? He said no. <laughs> and uh, I don't really know what the other big one is. But 
Um, well, I guess he's not going to manage the Mets because he's someone who is going to manage Italy in the World Baseball Classic. So I don't know if he has interest in being a manager or coaching full time. It's a little bit of a different job description, uh, the World Baseball Classic versus a, a major league team in a 162 game schedule. But, you know, it's an interesting road for him to potentially go down because he was very involved. He owned a soccer team over in Italy and it didn't end very well, but he was very involved and. I think he's a guy who wants something to do, uh, something to to get involved in and build from the the ground up, and I, I think that's why you know the team Italy position really spoke to him. But you know he has interest in in various things, but uh, owning the Mets will not be one of them apparently. I mean, you need some big time money to own the Mets. Even Alex Rodriguez doesn't have the money to yeah, buy this you, Mets team. Where you're talking about billions of dollars. That's why you form a group. You yeah. know, you buy you got a group of guys there, guys and gals that want to want to chip in and get this done. But I like this photo he put up on uh, Instagram, Mr. Piazza here, uh, standing next to his his wall, his big photo there on the wall. He says, uh, you want me on that wall? You need me on that wall. And I guess that's from what um, – shit. Um, damn, what movie is that? I'm blowing it here. What movie is this? Oh, yes. Uh, Few Good Men. Yeah, Few Good Men. So uh, that's the story of Piazza. I mean, some fans weren't thrilled with his um, his answers about – who owns the team? Clearly, he's buddies with the Wilpons, and he went golfing with uh, Jeff the other day. But he mm-hmm. said something like uh, he thinks the Mets are in a good place right now, which obviously a lot of fans aren't going to be as excited to hear. That uh, you Well, know, he said the Wilpons care about winning. They care about winning more than it seems, is, is what he said. Something like more that. More than they get credit for it. Right. I don't want to quote him exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paraphrasing it. Uh, but I... I don't disagree with him. I think that the Wilpons want to win. They are, a, you know, Fred Wilpon considers a baseball guy, and and Jeff. They just, I don't think they've had the financial wherewithal to be able to get the Mets to that next level. And and the other thing is they want to win, so they involve themselves, and so that they shoot themselves in the foot with that rather than taking a step back a little bit. So I I understand what Piazza is saying. Obviously, is um, you know got, has a relationship with them. A little, you know, yeah. beyond. Yeah, yeah. So one person who is not buying the Mets is Piazza. Another one who's now in discussions with, which some people are freaking out about. Uh, James Dolan is looking mm. into buying SNY as Mets sale rumors swirl. So obviously, I don't think SNY is up for sale on its own. I think you kind of have to buy the whole, uh, the whole package here. But um, Dolan as Mets owner, how do you think that would go over in this city? Well. I- he has money to spend. He, he's spent money on the Knicks, on the Rangers. That hasn't been the issue. It's, you know, which owner are you getting? Are, are you getting the one who's going to meddle like he does with the Knicks? Or and the Rangers, like right. we were just talking about with the Wilpons, has been a problem for them. Or is it going to be, okay, you hire a John Davidson, you hire somebody who knows what they're doing, you let them run the team. And if they have to rebuild for a couple of years, you let them build it up. And, you know, look at the Rangers with the run that they have made over uh, the last couple of months and trying to make a surprise run towards the postseason. It's kind of a tough weekend for them. But, you know, that's that's the difference of what you're going to get, which side of James Dolan. I think what people want from an owner is fund the team and hire somebody competent and let them run it give them the autonomy you don't need to involve yourself just because you were successful in some other industry or some other business or your dad was it doesn't mean that you have to put your imprints on every decision that the team makes I mean I think we all understand that ultimately you know approval comes from ownership uh-huh. but don't involve yourself in the day-to-day machinations of the team and these are some of the things that have held back the Knicks. And, and you could talk about the Mets in the same way over the last couple of decades. For the most part, I feel like um, the Wilpons are pr- pretty okay, pretty good with kind of um, not silencing, but kind of brushing things off. I'm sure when they walk through the stadium, people are probably yelling at them, sell the team, so on and so forth. Dolan, the way he treats Thin skin. Yeah. yeah, the way that he is at. Uh, MSG mm-hmm. when things aren't going great and he's getting people ejected. Yeah. This is not a good idea. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. But uh, share the show if you want to be in the running for the $20 gift card. We will get to the big dugout mugs promo in a little bit. They're giving away $400 worth of mugs, which is absolutely insane. Lizzie, I don't mean to jump in, but I think someone's at the door if you want to go uh, see what's going on over it's there. the mailman and he'll come around the back. Uh, okay. So uh, <laughs> I do want to give Lizzie a second here to promote 
because she has something. Is it, is it this weekend? Friday? When Friday. Is so Friday, Lizzie is raising money for Cycle for Survival. Correct. I don't want to butcher anything here, so no, you just take good. it away. Um, I am on a team with three other um, Army members, Nancy, MJ, and Bianca. Um, this year we're trying really hard. It's been harder than, than any other year to, to raise money for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, this will be my fourth year riding. Um, I'm at four. Well, tell them what riding means. So you oh, ride bikes. I ride a bike. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's a four hour event. You get there. You, your team is there. Um, our team is, I think one of the largest this year and it's created all of women riding and we all raise money, all women, women, women. It's awesome. Um, so you ride your bike for four hours. Each rider gets an hour. We have four bikes. And this year I have $1,405. My goal is 2000. So help me out. So how do they, how do they donate? <laughs> I'm going to, um, put it in the, in the comments right now. Or just go to your Twitter account at Lizzie underscore. Yes. It's on the screen there at or Lizzie go to underscore my 27L. I'm sure she has the link posted there. Great cause. And it's, I, I don't 100% know. A hundred percent of the money that's a hundred percent of the money that's raised is, is, it goes to Memorial Sloan Kettering, and and they help with they help families, they help with with treatment and everything like that. So it's it's amazing. You should see this scene. Right. It's not just like bikes in a room. Like it's they put up videos. It's like awesome. It's like a club. It's, it's like an event. music. Fuck it. Yeah. Music, uh, not, not to curse during this charity you know, uh, <laughs> promo here, but music's bumping. And they're jumping around. And it's like mm -hmm. a nightclub. And so MJ Neon lights. MJ buys us shirts that glow and and go to the base of the music. Yeah, that's crazy. Too. So we're like, <laughs> we're over their top, and it's it's awesome. MJ's the best. Yes. Nancy, we love you guys. Uh, I do want to give a little bit of a promo here for us as well, because we are going back to Syracuse and Binghamton this summer Honestly, when we had this this plan last year, Pete, I said, you know, hey, maybe we'll go up once. Maybe we'll go up once in a while, once every five years or so. Before the game even started in Binghamton, uh, actually, Syracuse was first last year. Before, no, wait, Binghamton was first last year. Before the game even started, Lizzie and I are out in the picnic area in the back, and the amount of people that were just so excited to just be hanging out and having a picnic before the game and everything else that went along with, you know, the jerseys and the hats and the vouchers and everything else, we're like, all right, this is an annual thing. Make mm -hmm. sure you don't you know, uh, uh, whatever, uh, don't just have this one day circled. So we are going back this summer, we, but we're switching it up this year. This year we're going to Syracuse first on the Friday night, Binghamton on Saturday night, just the way it works out best with their schedule. And thankfully it works out great with our, our home schedule as well. So we have a lot of games going on um, with the Seven Line Army's MLB games, but these packages that the, that the teams put together are phenomenal. So the first one will go up on Monday the 9th. Monday, March 9th, which is next week, and that's the Syracuse package. It's 70 bucks. comes with the ticket for the game, uh, early admission, a couple of food vouchers, um, uh, beer vouchers, the jersey, the hat. Uh, someone from the group is going to throw out the first pitch. There's a post-game fireworks show. It's, it's so much stuff for only 70 bucks. And then the next night, we're going to be in Binghamton, so June 6th in Binghamton. Those tickets go up on Monday, March 16th, so two weeks from today. That package is $55. It includes the uh, pregame picnic and everything else that goes along with it. Same thing with the jerseys and the hats. So a lot of fun, really great time. Coming I remember Binghamton. They had great food and, and beer specials over awesome. there last year. I remember you talking about that for a while. It was, Dude, it was I don't know how these teams, because we, then we also go to uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn in yeah. July, how they make a dime. I don't have no idea how they make a dime, because a lot of these the minor league teams, they always link in some kind of sponsor that pays for the jerseys or whatever. There's no sponsor here. It's like we're making shirts, we're making jerseys, we're making the hats, we're having a fun time. They're doing the beers, the food, the giveaways, the first pitch opportunity, the group photo on the field afterwards, the fireworks shows. I don't know if I said that three times already, but it's so much fun. It's fairly inexpensive if you can get up there. Um, and the cool thing is, too, that they work out uh, local uh, hotel deals. So if you go to the com right now, click on the blog post, and all the information will be there for you to figure out what to do, how to sign up, and uh, all that good stuff. So definitely set yourself up with a reminder for next Monday for Syracuse, two Mondays from now for Binghamton. And uh, there is not a bus option, because last year we couldn't fill the bus up. I guess people want the luxury of having a car for themselves for the weekend, not having to take a bus overnight and all that stuff. So definitely join us for that. And another update, this Wednesday is the last possible chance to get tickets for D.C. 
They aren't sold out yet, but we do have to cut them a month before the game so we can print the shirts, make the patches, ship everything out. So this Wednesday is one month before our April 4th outing in D.C. So I think as of now, I haven't checked, but as of now, before we went live, there's about 25 tickets left. So if you're on the fence and you want to join us, go to the pick up tickets before it's too late. If you're listening to this on a replay, it might be sold out by now, but the and uh, join us. So Lizzie's going to get to the share contest in just a couple seconds here, but... Um, I do want to bring up something which is just totally random, but Mike Trout hit a golf ball about like a thousand feet. I, maybe it's I like the cartoon where the ball starts screaming when it's in the air. It was that's how he hit the golf. Sounds ball. like the top golf place. It. it looked like a top golf place, I guess, in Arizona where the Angels are training, and he basically had the whole place stop to watch him drive and put on an absolute show. I mean, it's like Happy Gilmore style drive, a result at least, without having to put that much effort into it. There's a reason he's as good as anybody in baseball, and a lot of that swing and power translates very nicely. But we've seen a lot of the star players get on the driving range and start hitting balls a mile. I think Nelson Cruz had a video that went out this off season where he was at the driving range and appeared to hit one over the net onto a highway or something that's a few miles away. Like you know, it's just <laughs> it's what some of these guys are able to do. It's amazing. I wish there was a Top Golf in Port St. Lucie. There's going to be one here soon. I think it's a Top Golf, but they're building it on the LAE service road, so that should be pretty cool. Maybe we could have like our own orange and blue thing. Uh, you can well, golf. golf. You can golf, there right? You, go. yeah. you golf, Danny golfs. I don't. I drink. I don't golf, but I think they go hand. <laughs> you in don't hand. have to go chase down your ball if it's yeah. going onto the driving range anyway. So I, I haven't done the top golf thing, but I would think it's it's a little less go. effort. We yeah. should go. The uh, I went to the golf the driving range a couple times, maybe ten years ago. But Kelly and I went. And when I hit the ball, it basically goes straight up and like lands next to me. So if anyone's next to me, who's like really serious about golfing. They usually just take their shit and leave because like I ruin everyone's time. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm hitting the ball. It's like yeah. there's usually a net above you, right? It hits that. It lands in front of the guy. Stick next to, to me. mini golf, huh? Yeah, mini golf. Uh, so let's get to this dugout mugs promo because this is absolutely incredible. And I didn't want to say this promo earlier because you might want to turn off the show right now. Uh, and that's the last thing we want to do. So their promo today is phenomenal. So go to dugoutmugs.com slash OABT, and they're taking $20 off the first 20 people's orders. So that's $400 worth of mug discounts on dugoutmugs.com slash OABT. And you don't need a special promo code. When you type that in, the website knows to automatically deduct $20 from your cart. So that is so cool. Load up, personalize a mug, get whatever you want. Our dugout mugs should be here soon for our website. Uh, we're doing the Seven Line Army mugs and LGM mugs. Should be up soon. So dugoutmugs.com slash OABT. The first 20 people will get. $20 off their transaction. So cool. definitely uh, watch our, our viewership just went, <laughs> it just took a dive and exploded into the ground. You but can open a new tab, you know, you don't have to close this one. Smart man, Pete. <laughs> I got 15 tabs open at all times. I'm one of those people. <laughs> Not me. I, I, I freak out. Like the bottom right button, if you open up on the iPhone and you, you click to see how many open tabs you have, I, I need it to be like three or less. I oh, can't no. have. No. Oh, All those no. things open. I got yeah. like 15, 20 tabs. Oh, I'm, I'm always on this site, so I'll just keep this one so I can go back to it. No, it's, I'm not OCD. I've had the Gmail, the numbers on the unread emails up to like 10,000. What? Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if that would give me so much anxiety. can't handle that. My emails are crazy. That would give me so much, so much anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> like, if our emails for here are higher than like 15, 20, it's, I, give free, I freak out. I'm like, Lizzie, get to the emails before <laughs> Friday, get to those emails. And, uh, you know, because it's just us. People think we have, like, this team of people replying to stuff. It's, here you go. It's us. So, um, Lizzie, are you ready to do this share contest? Yes. All right. So, here's the deal. Uh, the share contest for Instagram, we're going to keep that running for the week. So, just like we did for this week, uh, Lizzie's about to announce last week's winner. The Instagram uh, contest runs for the week. So, if you happen to miss the live show and you still want something for free, or maybe you're watching on a different platform or listening right now on iTunes, uh, head on over to our Instagram account and just comment on today's video that you want to win the gift card and we'll randomly scroll down and pick someone next week. So without further ado, Lizzie, why don't you name last week's winner of what was last week? The Jacob the Ground bobblehead? Yes. All right. So this person wins. Go ahead. Uh, congratulations to Sergeant Woodward. That's at S-S-G-T-W-O-O-D-A-R-D. Awesome. Congratulations. And for today's and gift card winners? for today's gift card winners on Twitter, I have... 
Samil Gutierrez. That's at E L S A M 23. And on Facebook, uh, Kyle Mitchell. Awesome. Congratulations, guys. Congrats, guys. And uh, something else I want to talk about. We got approved to be in the Bayport Blue Point St. Patrick's Day Parade. Nice. You actually had to apply. Tis the season. So, yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day Parade. This is the month. They're pretty much from here on out. I think they are almost going to, into April now because there's just – I think my hometown of East Islip had it this past weekend. I mean, it's yeah. already started mm-hmm. up. Well, because people like to go to all of them, and they don't want to overlap. So they, it's a whole month, baby. And, you know, <laughs> Shoemaker was telling me um, a lot of them now are linking in, like, 5Ks. So there'll be, like, a 5K before the parade so you can burn off some calories for all the beers you're going to drink once you get to the parade route, I That's guess. That's a good idea. Yeah. Get, you know, it allows you to start earlier than you otherwise would because you get up early for the race, you finish up at 10 o'clock, Carbo and load. then, boom, you're free. You already <laughs> were productive today, so yeah. you can start start up boozing up, uh, you know, morning time, mimosas, beers, whatever it takes, you know? I was saying to Kelly this mood. weekend, since uh, Amelia, she had her first ever dance competition on Saturday, and um, their team got first place. Lizzie, did you know that? No. Well, there was only one team in it. Oh. So they're they're comp- they're like different categories, and uh, she's four. So whatever the group was, the group number, there was no one else in the category. So it was cute. They still got the, the trophy and everything. But that's cute. We've been running. Our hours have been crazy. We've been getting up at five o'clock. But like you said, you have a full day by ten. By nine in the morning on Saturday, I feel like I had a, a complete full day. It was like nine fifteen. I was like, all right, what? Shit, we've been up for four hours already. Um, yeah, so St. Patrick's Day, if you're going to be out here on Long Island, we're going to try to link up with one of the local bars along the parade route. So once the parade's over, we can park the truck, hang out, and maybe we'll bring some dugout mugs to sell or something like that. So it's not going to be a full-blown, like, live after five style, like, hey, let's set up, set up the sales truck. But we'll have the truck. We'll be giving away some free stuff. i got to order some flags for the for the truck, and it uh, should be a good time. So, um How's Pete? the truck looking? I haven't been in the back yet to, to to check it out. It still runs. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, it's, you know what? It, it looked good last year. It, it looks great. I mean, and you know what? Driving the truck down the LIE or wherever we happen to be going, we get a lot of beeps, a lot of looks. And the first day I ever drove to a game, I thought I was getting pulled over. Cop pulls up next to us. I had the door open because it was it was it was summer or it was warm enough to have the door open. And I'm like, shit, is this illegal? I see a lot of the post the post office guy drives yeah. the door open, and. I'm like, shit, I'm getting pulled over. So he starts beeping. I'm like, all right, do I got to get over? He's like, no, let's go, Max. He's like yelling on the highway. He's like, woo, yeah. And then he starts taking pictures while he's driving, which is definitely illegal, Mr. Police Officer. But uh, it's a great time. And um, I'm jumping around here. But at that dance, reci- dance competition, I had the idea to put some extra miles on the truck. I want to start stopping at people's jobs throughout this month on random days throughout the week if they happen to be closer on passing by and bring them stuff for them and their Mets fan co-workers to get excited about the season. So if you haven't seen that tweet, go to my Twitter account, Darren J. Meenan, and I am going to be scrolling through and seeing who might be along one of my routes this month, and uh, I'll stop by and give you some free stuff to get you excited about the Get Mets. the truck on the cruise, you know? Oh, man. Oh, man, Put it all that. together. Oh Gotta get God, a helicopter to drop no. it off on a barge right next door. <laughs> please all right, guys. don't give him any more crazy ideas. So I think we got to everything. <laughs> Stay tuned for all things match. That's an orange and blue thing. We'll see you next Monday. Definitely head on over to Lizzie's Twitter account and donate if you can. Thank no you. donations too Thank small. You. No, I will take any donation, literally. Throw some change or <laughs> what are they? Oh, damn, what was that movie? Uh, uh, I, I got time. Um, <laughs> what was the movie? Uh, Coming to America. Oh. When they're they're asking for donations, and she goes, "We like the, we accept the 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 kind that jingles, but we we prefer the kind that folds." So yeah. go on over to Lizzie. I probably butchered that. Go on to Lizzie's <laughs> Twitter account. It's digital anyway, Darren. It's close on. enough. Get hit Venmo, whatever it is. No one has cash anymore. All right, guys. Orange blue thing. See you next week, and uh, that's it. Let's go Mets. See you, guys.